Recent food outbreaks linked to spinach, peppers, peanut products, and cookie dough dramatize two important truths. First, our current regulatory system does not adequately protect Americans from serious widespread foodborne illnesses. And second, the dangers associated with foodborne outbreaks are profound. Senate Bill 510, the Food Safety and Modernization Act, is expected to be brought up in the Senate before Congress adjourns for the year. The bill would grant the FDA additional regulatory power, and opponents of the bill are concerned about the effects new regulations would have on small farmers. And we're talking about people's livelihoods. One false recall could put a family out of business. If you give any agency and the federal government new authority, obviously they're going to try to use it, and uh, you can sometimes get into a problem. Uh, and simply shut down any small facility or producer regardless of the, uh, the product. But Sandra Eskin, the director of the Pew Charitable Trust's food safety campaign, said a regulatory update is long overdue. The last time that the Food and Drug Administration's law relating to food was changed in any material way was 1938. Over the course of the following decades, we've seen our food supply expand and change markedly, but the law has not kept up. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that foodborne diseases cause approximately 76 million illnesses each year, including approximately 325,000 hospitalizations and 5,000 deaths in the United States. These numbers are staggering and intolerable, and they are a call to action. We have seen contamination and foodborne illness throughout, you know, basically sourced back to almost every point in the food chain, starting with production. For example, looking at fresh fruits and vegetables, the spinach outbreak in 2006, they don't know for sure the source of the contamination, but it clearly happened in the field. So the law is aimed at giving FDA the tools and authorities it needs to protect us from the type of threats and risks that food supply poses. But small farmers say they are not part of the problem and do not share the same safety concerns as larger farms. Julie Bolton of Grove's Content Farm in Maryland sells eggs from her 300 chickens. She says that she's concerned that she'll go out of business if she has to follow the same regulations as large-scale food production operations. They're just not even related to one another. <laughs> you know, my chickens are outside. My, um, you know, I feed by the ton, one ton at a time. Um, my barn cats take care of all the rodents. But it's all on such a small scale that it's, I'm personally able to deal with any kind of safety issue that might come along. Critics are concerned the FDA will not be able to effectively regulate such a broad spectrum of farms, ranging from Bolton's 300 chicken operation to Iowa-based Rembrandt Foods, which owns 14 million hens. The bill was sent out of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee last November, and media reports indicate that Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will bring the bill up for debate on Wednesday of this week. Meanwhile, supporters of small producers are hoping that amendments submitted by Senator John Tester are passed. The amendments would exempt small producers and producers that sell primarily directly to consumers, hotels, and restaurants from new regulations. Again, Sandra Eskin. Rather than telling people they don't have to meet these basic safety requirements that will be scale and size appropriate. Rather than exempting them, we think you should be giving assistance in helping them meet the requirements of the law. Senator Harkin, as chairman of the Senate committee, has had the last word on the bill's language for now and has said that he has 90 votes in hand to pass the bill as is. For the record, note that a quorum is present and uh, the bill has been passed uh, unanimously by the committee.